All right, we will come back. This uh, this is the part two of our chapter number seven, actually, and uh, we will be still discussing on uh, error correction modeling, the part two of error correction modeling. We this part will be uh, focusing more on the uh, this part will be focusing more on uh, on the estimation. Uh, so I just uh, uh, carry on with this thing first. So. Uh, I've discussed in part one actually the part one actually the error correction model actually based on uh, uh, we have a variable called speed of adjustment. You'll see this uh, later in the uh, estimation, right? And um, most part of this portion actually most part of this portion I actually gathered from a uh, Masih and Masih article, right? Uh, so basically the equation this is been taken from our article. Um, my article and uh, uh, the co-authors uh, that talks about the VCM and this is the error correction term right so if you only have one equation means that is error correction model if you have two we can call it back the error correction model uh, so so in that particular sense and to test whether uh, with the interest is that to know for example in this case uh, we want to know whether CAD cos BD or uh, BD cos CAD, right? Uh, this kind of causality, and then you will see from here that that is the causality and that is the short run causality, right? The F test or the Ward test for the expected variable first different indicate the short run, right? While the long run actually is this part, this uh, 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 this ECT terms here, right? The U two and the U uh, O O, or actually it's a mu one and the mu two. Uh, especially right so for for example the explanation and uh, given the example so if reject or is significant means that the uh, the error correction term uh, is significant and uh, contain the long run information so this part of it is uh, adopted not just from my article actually originally from uh, Granger 1988 and it's have have been um, a, a call standard procedure in uh, time series estimation all right so uh, and then this vector error correction model it depends on your result that you get from uh, johansson jusilis co-integration test right so uh, surely this you can refer back uh, to to uh, dr jerome article let me show you dr jerome article let me show you dr jerome article here uh, Dr. Jerome article will be um, where is Dr. Jerome article Dr. Jerome article let me yep I have this here just now Yeah, this is Dr. Jerome article with Dr. Po and uh, we straight away go to the estimation actually this this part of it uh, yeah this section this section here is the VECM right this part of it is the VECM right the vector error correction model in and the error correction term is here Okay, um, the in order to capture the uh, and and this is the ECM. If let's say you take out one equation, which is the uh, the first equation normally, everything here is in first different except for the ECT, not in first different because here this equation they contain two information, which is the short run and the long run. Uh, those with the uh, triangle sign in front are considered the short run. Uh, first different and this is the long run information so there's two information important information there in this uh, article so we, let me uh, check back uh, what is going on so we are about four minutes down the road um, let's go to e-views right let's see this slides first so after co-integration we will continue with Granger causality how should we proceed let's say this is the result where you get uh, one, uh, one co-integrating vector where you get uh, this result shows that one co-integrating vector means that r equals one, one in this case. Eh? In this case, all right. Go to prop. Uh, 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 go, go, go to proc certainly. Make auto, make vector auto regression, and then we proceed uh, from there. Uh, uh, last. Uh, I mean, uh, last chapter show you uh, have shown you how to do the VAR testing, and right now this VCM is a special case of VAR, 
where you can estimate it based on this like this for example this is the VAR specification right uh, you have unrestricted VAR which is the normal VAR VECM and the Bayesian Bayesian is uh, another uh, school of thoughts uh, you can say that the VECM is a special case of uh, VAR estimation why use VECM because it's quite integrated if it's not quite integrated we proceed with just the normal VAR as we done it uh, last chapter yet uh, if you're interested in to find the short run relationship then the VAR should be conducted in first different all right so uh, for example this is the result right now so you see that uh, this this actually are taken from the one of the IMF uh, uh, online lecture right uh, which everyone anyone can attend I attended that last year actually and the result here if if the rank is zero is no quite integration full rank means all the variables should supposed to be i0 this is similar as what in my notes in uh, chapter number six uh, less than full rank there's a uh, independent integration relationship means that uh, in this case in our case of three variable uh, you'll be r equal to one r equal to two uh, r equal to three is full rank and no quite integration is r equal to zero all right so we can look at that uh, and uh, this is the result actually this is the normalized equation the long run equation and this is the vecm equation i'll talk more on this thing when we do the estimation I'll go back to these slides again surely and after that we do the granger causality so there's two parts part one is vector error correction model results part two is the granger causality which is this one right this is the granger causality and this is the summary of the granger causality and the summary of the direction of the causality uh, surely this is uh, part of it right so this for example for example only for example I will show I will show all this thing right? I will show all this thing in uh, e-views um, e-views right let's go back to e-views or how we're going to do this step by steps um, where is my e-view where is my e-views yeah my e-view 10 here all right use e-view 10 here uh, because it belongs to the university so, oh yeah, uh, no, for down. Yeah, the this box, this box is out here. <laughs> no problem. Uh, it's good in a way. So, um, previously or the previous chapter when we estimate like this, yeah, when we estimate like this, we open up as a uh, 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 open up as a group then you estimate Johansson Johansson useless coin integration test uh, this is supposed to be like two in this case just give this as an example so this is the result actually based on this result you can compare back to uh, what happens here this result let me let me compare back with the slides eh? uh, let me make this thing oh this is too small so remember the number here 40.119 for trace statistic and uh, uh, 27.042 for the maximum eigen value right it's the same result even after uh, years that I do this estimation all right so the same result leg two uh, this is the same result that uh, that that going to be presented uh, for the joints that you say so the next steps for this VECM is actually go to proc proc in a short form for procedure go to proc mac vector auto regression right here in the previous chapter we choose this one standard var now we choose this one vector error correction model right we choose this one right you do not include anything you do not change it except maybe you know what is going on let's say you know the restriction this is another level of doing uh, of uh, after doing the vecm but for now just do this vecm Right, just do this VCM. This one also I will show you later. Um, just click OK. You come out something like this. Yeah, you come out like this. So we have first part of the result, which is actually this part of the result. Right, let me show you. Uh, right, this part of the result. Right, uh, let's compare zero point nine nine four nine four eight nine five six. Right. All right, it's a little bit different there. Let me check why. There must be a reason behind. Aha, now I know the reason behind. 
the reason behind here is because this one I we do not use I do not use GDP as the dependent variable uh, this happens if you want to do normalized equation but if you want to just estimate the var it doesn't matter the sequence of the variable uh, but here uh, because we want to know the normalized equation let's say you want to know the normalized equation what is normalized equation the normalized equation here uh, for example here the normalized equation normalized equation it uh, actually shows the long run relationship or or actually shows the long run equation right long run equation of the estimation why this is long run because we already find a uh, long run cointegration yet yeah, we found long run cointegration and we found r equals to one so that's why r equals to one here uh, uh, let's say uh, uh, r equal to one but let's say you have r equals to two then you will have two here uh, two uh, uh, two column here let let me show you that what i mean what have uh, what I mean by that actually let's go back here let's see I put here two uh, you see now we have two two coin the co integration equation I'll go to two let me change back All right uh, here is one here means that number of co integration like I told you uh, our result we can have uh, zero one two three but zero certainly you don't have to estimate this part it's only one and two 3 is you don't have to estimate this part also because 3 is considered as full rank full rank means uh, 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 the variables are i0 in that sense but you force them to have long run relationship <laughs> right so in this case it's only one the default is always one right so r equal to one so i did it this thing back r equal to one so this is the relationship so here you can see that the revenue is negative relationship the uh, negative to GDP and this one expenditure is positive to GDP and both are significant how I know it they are significant you can easily use the 5% let's say you use 5% which is equal to 1.96 following the normal uh, statistics of uh, 1.96 I mean or more more or less something like that 1.96 and this is the constant and you can easily write this right you can easily write this equation out uh, I mean you can write this equation out as a L uh, GDP equals uh, constant is a negative 3.6 to uh, 9 um, uh, minus you know minus 2.011 plus 1.053 oh, sorry I didn't, I didn't write here EXL EXPN and this one is uh, uh, L uh, revenue all right so this is this is the equation and then you can explain like as if you explain the oil as last semester huh? this is how you explain uh, whether it's significant whether it's what this and you see up here standard error is in this kind of uh, parenthesis and t statistic is in this kind of parenthesis so here if comparatively to uh, to t statistic uh, comparatively with the 1.96 or even at 1% they are significant so the significant influence GDP where revenue is negative impact and uh, expenditure is positive impact huh. so this bring up an interesting explanation where expenditure could boost up the economy it's like what happened right now in the era of COVID uh, uh, every government in the world uh, boosting up the economy by spend more how they spend more they give uh, assistance monetary assistance and so on to the people to the right yeah, like for example Malaysia when you uh, when you listen to the presentation of the Minister of Finance that talks a lot on the assistance the prihatin uh, package and all the others that very much related to this all right so let me uh, go back again here so that's the first part the normalized equation the long run the second part down here which is the uh, more important part what is important now this is the this is like the VAR estimation uh, last uh, my last video or, of uh, in chapter number six the only difference is this part this is the unique part what is this part this part is this section haha <laughs> this section All right you still remember this section this this part is this particular this this two guy here 
but in our case here in our uh, in our estimation here uh, in our estimation here we have three equation the example I give you only two equation all right this the different here so again how to interpret this is the coefficient this is the um, standard error and then this is the t statistic the coefficient same thing here so how to interpret uh, based on these slides read and read and read and read this slide this is the condition of ect which which uh, must be fulfilled right the condition of ect which uh, to be fulfilled it, the ect coefficients is less than one negative uh, significant as per coindication result if you get r equal to one supposedly you get only one variable uh, or one uh, error correction term that are significant if you get r equal to two which is two coindicating vector then it should have two that is significant uh, this is based on what the literature says all right but the first one and the second why it should be uh, less than one is like it's the same thing as uh, R square so the adjustment not supposed to be more than 100 in that sense like this one here let me go in the very very beginning here you see this part speed of adjustment right uh, the very beginning so, do, so this partial adjustment or the speed adjustment or the coefficient of adjustment not supposed to be more than one uh, and it's uh, greater than zero so the adjustment is there so we can explain the adjustment how fast does it how long does it take to go back to the equilibrium and the negative sign and it's supposed to be negative because it's called error correction it's correction correcting all right so in that sense so uh, that's the particular meaning behind here so here let, let us check uh, which one that fulfill this criteria uh, they fulfill this criteria first we check the coefficient uh, whether it's negative the, the coefficient, the three coefficient here, only two are negative. So we can, uh, not to say throw away, we can ignore this result first for now, but please report it. Please report all the result out. Right? Here, uh, negative, here, negative. Okay, then we check for significance. Um, negative less than one. So they are negative less than one. Yeah, fulfill the criteria. These are not significant, as we know uh, from 1.96 here. So only these are significant. Only this uh, expenditure ECT are significant. So the so the L E X P N ECT significant at five percent level, and the coefficient is zero point four five. Sorry, zero point four five six nine five four. <laughs> if you want to put all, but this one is good enough. So uh, to explain this, uh, to explain this kind of thing, or uh, is is like the adjustment, uh, adjustment would take forty five percent in a year, which uh, which makes um, um, about uh, I mean a little um, a little bit more than two years, uh, maybe about two years, two months or two years one month or two years three months to get back to 100 percent right 100 percent mistake to get back to the equilibrium 100 percent which we have found equilibrium uh, we have found this long run relationship using johansson now we want to know how fast is the adjustment uh, it's 45 percent in one year and it takes uh, uh more than two years to adjust back to 100 percent for this particular system of uh, vecm that this is the vecm the ECM adjustment so this is how you explain this is how the explanation come into picture so this is the first part right this is the the, the first part of it and then we sh and then we should go to, to the second part the first part right the second part will be the Granger causality so you answer both this one is the long run right here you see here this is long run now we want to answer this part the down part here which is a short run which you do not know yet the causality so where should we go? We go view, we go lag structure, there's a Granger causality slash block exogeneity test. Click, it will come out the result. So this is the result for Granger causality. How to read? Simple. See GDP, dependent variable, revenue dependent variable, expenditure dependent, uh, dependent variable, and this is the two independent variable in this particular equation. And this is the chi square and then the probability. 
the chi square the probability the chi square the probability all right which simply could be interpreted in such if a word to interpret uh, of such this is the granger causality result based on the slides uh, i put nicely in table like this which i will give to you um, but not now <laughs> but not now you can always try this exercise at home right uh, wait, uh, um, while watching the video interpret the ECT I already interpret for you <laughs> actually this is the ECT that should be interpreted because the only this one are significant only this one fulfill the three criteria be in mind you must fulfill all the three criteria less than one negative and significant right only this one summarize down and this is summary from this one let me go back this one here again uh, it's a summary from this result right that's a one two three four you can put in uh, and so on 26 let us check uh, this is this is a gdp to expenditure 26.76 right uh, 26.76 right? gdp to expenditure all right and then how about the short run and long run causality aha uh -huh. this is this is a good question in my eye this for this part i will um i'll discuss maybe in in in, in our online meeting and uh interpret our done that uh, 45 percent in one year already tell you uh, draw the diagram is this one <laughs> already draw the diagram and uh, how about the short run and long run short run causality uh, this is short run causality how about the long run causality uh -huh. right, any takers any takers any takers any anyone want to do this right uh, try it try it at home and we can discuss further in our online meeting surely because this will be very much important all right all right all right okay um so this is the short run causality how do we get this thing how do i draw this graph you see this you see this here uh only three are significant let's say let's say only this one uh, let me draw it again only this one this one and this one are significant this one is not significant if i use five percent if i use ten percent yes it is significant so here this one here is uh, how to read this thing this is the dependent variable this is the independent variable so here gdp cost expenditure right uh, gdp cost expenditure all right uh, this one is revenue cost gdp revenue cost gdp and here is revenue cost expenditure uh, revenue cost expenditure so you have this thing so we have a direct causality direct and indirect how how, how is indirect is because you see that uh, you see that revenue will cost expenditure through gdp uh, you see here oh, then uh, so gdp is like a mediating uh, or the uh, transmission uh, variable or, or the variable that uh, mediate the process from revenue to expenditure uh, right how, how can we easily expand this one you only can see the indirect causality once you draw up the graph if you don't draw out the graph you don't see this one also actually is a very good way to present your fyp uh, for the VECM for the causality analysis you should do this you should do this and uh, yeah draw up the graph uh, whether it's complicated or not complicated and then you sh show it whether uh, I mean what's going on uh, with 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 this variable uh, with the relationship of this variable so the interplay of the variable is important so that you can identify the indirect causality also if that exists but the direct is surely be there uh, so see so you see that three are direct the indirect will only be seen if we draw the graph so means that revenue can cost expenditure directly and indirectly through gdp means that revenue boosts up the gdp and gdp uh, with the money this is money revenue means money to the economy and then the 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 government uh, uh the can spend the money <laughs> all right uh so so in that particular sense okay this is how uh this is actually from the article uh this is actually from the article clark and mirza as i told you in the uh the first part of the video right uh, clark and mirza uh, here uh, clark and mirza here i show you 
this actually um, in some sense they are testing the Granger causality, Granger non-causality between Clark and Mirza. A very very important article and this figure is actually I copy from this here. Uh, and what does this uh, what does this figure mean actually? So there are three types uh, as they say the three types of uh, 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 co-integration. The first type is the one that we do now which is the Johansson based uh, kind of uh, co-integration. Right. The second type is the EG which is the Granger causality. Uh, I mean which is the angle Granger kind of uh, 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 analysis. And the third type is uh, uh, we do not use this thing in we do not apply this thing. This is another methodology. But then again, it's almost similar in some sense. Right? You see, you determine the lag for the VAR in level. VAR L is VAR level. And then you estimate the co-integrating rank. Whether it's this thing. You know, uh, an estimate is first different. If, let's say, uh, R equal to 0. Uh, estimate VECM uh, and test for Granger non-causality. Uh, right? For Granger non-causality. Or estimate... Uh, uh, VAR if it's R equal to N this is full rank interesting R equal to N is full rank in, the, in our case here R equals to 3 here in this case is where we do now here in the case if the variable are uh, not quite integrated alright so we have few few ways of doing it uh, you want to know the full name of this uh, what is uh, WEC and so on let me go back to the original article they have all the terms they use here right WEC means that the word test for gradient non causality from VCM a word test from uh, var different uh, and the word test for var level <laughs> right this MLS is uh, Maccabee uh, residual best test it's another form of uh, co integration test which we do not apply here in this class Right, so the only thing that we apply is uh, the first one and the second one here. All right, so so surely this article and another important article. I think I uploaded that also in the ellipse. Read that article, although it might sound a little bit hard to read, but it's okay to understand the concept is important. How how does the concept of Granger causality and and it's been uh, widely adopted uh, using the model of whether you want to use VAR or VECM. Right, but the idea is that it's very clearly stated here, uh, and it's uh, surely is also stated in in our in our slides there. It's clearly stated here is that if if it's co-integrated, we use VCM. Uh, if it's full rank, we use other types of VAR VAR in level, and it's not co-integrated, we can use VAR in first different. Here. Another example taken from the IMF uh, uh, course online. So you have the raw data, you plot and you test the unit root. As I told you, plot the data to understand what is going on. Right? Suggestion. If it's all I0, then we can estimate VAR in level like order P or, or this is like an extension of OLS. Extension of OLS. If if, if let's say uh, uh, I is I1, then you test co-integration. If it's no co-integration, we can use to test uh, VAR in first different. Right? If it's co-integration, then you use VECM. Very, very clear shows that. Right? Uh, this is also taken from the slides. Right? This is taken from the slides. Uh, as I already show you just now in here, Right, I show you this one. Uh, this one I shown to you. Uh, let me, let me, let me get this thing. If let's say you get uh, two vector, let me go back to the estimates here. Right, go back to co-integration. Let's say you get two long run relationship. We put two here, right, and then you get these two, which is, uh, which is this explanation in the slides here. Right, they have two co-integrating vector. And then we estimate you change this to two, the VAR specification. And then you have two, right here to explain it uh, in such a way, right? In such a way, right? So and that is the variable that you are uh, here in this example, all right? So these are numbers of article that you can refer to. You can always refer to uh, our article, my article, uh, Dr. Jerome article, and the rest of the important article. This article is very important. I, I think I have it. 
uh, with with you. I think I give this thing to uh, I put this thing up with uh, in in the uh, ellipse. Let me let me check back. I think I have this thing. Ah, uh, this article. It's very important. Estimating short run and long run relationship. A guide for applied economics. Uh, and uh, I think there's a lot of question on the short run and long run relationship. So this is a good 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 article. Although it's published uh, more than ten years ago, but it's still a very good article. It talks about the BCM. Talks about VAR. Talks about the short run relationships, short run estimation and long run estimation. How to do it. And, and and so on all right so um, I think with that I uh, with this part I think we should I, I would need to stop here it's already 30 minutes thank you very much for listening to me and uh, we'll see each other surely in uh, online for when we talk about this chapter in the next uh, few weeks down the road so uh, take care adios stay safe